It's not the hardest pants Daz can make it, but I'm not gonna lie and say you can walk all over it. Yeah, here we go, we're doing this video. I'm going over differences from True Believer, but I am going over the changes where because that's where they matter. So if you're here for just to see the basic notes, I mean, I assume you've already read them. I'm going to go over the gameplay aspect of Harbinger, more as their differences from True Believer, but mainly from a gameplay standpoint. So that's where we're going to start. So let's just head into it. The first change, uh, no Doom decrease on Mystery Clear. 10% Doom, which is a pretty big chunk considering how most players end their run above 90%, at least from what I've seen. Although, to be fair, there are some decisions players make that raise that themselves. I think resting and shop visits are the usual example. At the very least, on average, shop rerolls are more costly the lower Doom threshold we have, so whatever you're shopping for has to pay for its funds in that run. This on top of the next point makes shops worse, not useless, but worse on a Harbinger run. Plus one fun costs in shops, vending machine included. So for example, cigarettes cost three in True Believer or any other difficulty. They cost four now, pocket knife co costs one, now it costs two in Harbinger. However, this does make perks like Irizumi and Yakuza card on Haru better. If four funds is the difference between a pack of cigarettes on Haru, Irizumi is more useful than core strength if your battle strategy revolves around fitting certain actions in a turn with the help of cigarettes. Brace, wink wink. If the core damage damage increase still provides enough damage, then it'll still work for whatever strat you use. I'm not saying one is better than the other. But I lean more towards cigarettes or time reduction perks because of the extra damage enemies do on Harbinger, since a lot of enemies buff up to odd numbers that are cut in your favor when bracing. This isn't to say you always take Fast Swimmer or Adrenaline, but any huge time reduction you can get like these perks, Cigarettes or high fame stacks for Mizuki can definitely increase their chances of survival on Harbinger. Again, maybe core damage damage increase still will provide enough damage to kill something where it doesn't make any difference, but this is something I consider. Speaking of extra damage, yeah, all enemies do plus one damage at base. Everyone that does two does three, everyone that does three does four, and when Mystery scales your damage in your run later on, that's another point on top. So you really need to know more about the game to increase your survivability, or it'll help. You'll also probably see more meditate and pray actions. Enemies that do either stamina or reason will whittle you down so low that, barring dodging, your guaranteed choice to buy a turn of damage can come in the form of meditate or pray. Or maybe you're against Akamanto and you're dying on one stat and you want to trade off anyway. The fact is that you want to survive, so you might be using these actions more often because they are your last ditch options. This also means that you need to pay more attention to the event effects of success and failure and what you want to risk failing, or force failing if you're on ill-fated. The good news is that you can still brace to reduce damage increase on Harbinger. The bad news is your overall damage output will decrease, since theoretically going all out in a turn with three normal attacks for, say, 60% chance is potentially much better than taking guaranteed one damage but doing four damage to the enemy. So while some players, myself included, won't see too much of a difference because we usually played this way anyway before on True Believer, others who normally roll the dice will need to take into consideration the extra damage they're taking if they want to keep attacking three to four times in a turn without bracing. Of course, that's not to say you always want to brace attack. There are specific encounters and situations I've already run into on Harbinger where I gamble on three attacks for five damage with, say, an 85, 75, 75 percent chance to hit. So that's for each attack, because that would end the encounter quicker with less damage. Usually this is of the if the enemy does even damage, but there are encounters like the Obsessed Man and the Aspiring Model who make it easier to want to one-shot or two-shot them. So anyone doing brace attacks may want to gamble on efficiency in that sense as well. Although this cat in Seaside is still going to get rushed down, especially if you have Kana with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Oh yeah, and Kana. If you have eels, you probably want to pick up Kana. Just saying. Damage mitigation. Yeah. Plus one doomed location on Harbinger runs. Oh, this is so spicy. If there's any way to ramp up difficulty, this is another all-around change that can. Pantstaz didn't simply add one tier of threat level somewhere. There's just straight up a second doom location. So, yeah. Enjoy your 2% doom for investigating these locations. What this means is that you pray you don't get two mysteries that explore a doomed location, 
or both if you're that unlucky. One is likely to explore one or the other max threat level location a bunch of times, or enough times where it'll matter, and since there's less than a few ways to lower or ignore threat levels, it means players better learn the events quick, at least I would recommend it. Again, I don't think anyone's forcing anyone to play Harbinger difficulty, but if your goal is to survive this difficulty, event knowledge is much more helpful so you're not accidentally killing your run, as I'm likely to do when I forget which stat is checked or what the failure penalty is for some choices. Overall, it's more damage to look out for, so your plan to counter this is to find places in your run you're going to heal. Well, that's how I think of it mainly. Whether that's resting at home or and gambling on not running into Feeded Fumes the After Effect, seeing Festival in your run because that can be free rest for Doom, using Tree for Stamina heals, anything to avoid dying sooner rather than later. And when it gets dangerous, you'll have to make that choice, or risk continuing near death. Level up recovery minus one stamina one reason, so you can only heal two stamina or two reason when you level up. If there's any way to say you'll be at the brink of death more frequently, this is it. Indirectly, this buff stat increases simply because recovery is nerfed. However, if you're dying, I mean, that'll depend. Do you need the stat? Theoretically, if one level up allows you to pass a lighthouse check, it's more recovery since you avoid three damage instead of recover two stamina or reason. On top of that, if you're not ill-fated, each stat increase does increase your odds of passing an event stat check. Granted, you're not on ill-fated. Again, game knowledge will help you. And then, say you build into strength, strength does affect your base's time efficiency or help you increase your accuracy if it's a stat on your main weapon. Although, let me repeat, because these reasons I just gave may tempt some people into going, oh, increase my stats, yeah, that's the new strat on Harbinger. If you're dying, you make a choice. Heal now through level up, or know where you're going to heal, or increase a stat and take whatever risk you take not recovering stamina or reason. Hindsight leads to lost possibilities, so if you end up dying, the other option was there. Granted, you'll likely die if you're in a deadly situation anyway, but I can understand either option on level up. Some players like increasing stats and resting at home. Others use all their level ups for recovery. There are different strats, and diff players are different. I don't think any way is wrong, although the fact is that level up recovery has been nerfed. So yeah. Rest cost 1% less doom. This is actually a plus. The one boon on Harbinger as much as it matters, as long as this is intended. Whether it is or isn't, because I know some people might be wondering why this is a thing, the important part is that we have it with us now. If you rest, it costs 3% doom for 2 stamina, 2 reason. At base, this allows you to recover more efficiently during mysteries, so instead of rushing through mysteries and waiting for the lighthouse rest, because those are not affected by a lot of effects in-game, this 2 stamina reason for 3% doom is more doom efficient than the lighthouse. Emphasis, at base. If you're on Goizo, if you get a broken nose, if you get defeated fumes after effect, these all push back against the 1 plus we currently have on Harbinger over True Believer. Of course, that doesn't outweigh the changes that Harbinger is more difficult, but we needed something, so we have it with us. This change also buffs Hot Bath if you're an Ico main, since your rests, assuming no negative effects at the moment, become 1% doom for 1 stamina reason. Mathematically, it becomes 3% doom for 3 stamina three reason, but you get what I mean, which is pretty good. Although again, we're assuming there are no negative effects, which doesn't negate the Harbinger change or Hot Bath. I mean... Are you going to be upset that Goizo Rest costs 6% Doom on True Believer over 5% on Harbinger? It'll depend. If you're dying and have no choice, I appreciate the 1% difference, because I'm probably resting twice, so that's 2% Doom saved. Granted, you can argue back that you'll likely die anyway in such a situation, but that's where context comes into play. If you're near the end, maybe you don't rest anyway and you rely on Lighthouse, which means, yeah, you're not benefiting from the home rest on Harbinger or Hot Bath, but even if you were on the last mystery with two investigations left, that's a scary gamble to me. I mean, assuming you're dying at like one stamina and you have two investigations left, yeah, that's still scary to me. I mean, is that not scary to most of people out there? I, those are betting odds, and I'll take the guarantee if I have the Doom to spare. You see what I mean by game knowledge will help you decide more how context comes into play? 
Again, we're talking about rests costing 1% less doom because of the low value numbers of this game. It means your actions have more weight, since a 1% doom can mean the difference between investigating a doom location and having enough doom to survive, or feeling comfortable about making a trip to the vending machines for a pack of cigarettes, say for boss encounters. At least, it feels important to me when I think about it like this. Maybe some people it doesn't, but you know. If we're talking about survivability, think about it like this. You want to make every percent of doom count. Even if it's because of an event that gives you 4% doom because you can plan or account for that. In fact, that's what you do when you're looking at investigations in mysteries or knowing if you're going to hit a global event. I often avoided home rests on True Believer because they were 4% doom. Now, if I'm about to run to a boss or some dangerous situation, yeah, resting at home becomes a more viable option. And I'm not even the type of player who likes to top myself off in the middle of the run like that. So we went over a lot for little tweaks here and there. Some miscellaneous points. Every character is serviceable on Harbinger. Yeah, Kyrie's instant spell might be garbage most of the time when you start, but hey, when you get that random spell after a mystery on her perk and it's threat of fate, or for the evil people, flesh regrowth, Harbinger of nothing is what the game becomes. Aiko is still Aiko. Haru changes make him a beast, but you need cigarettes on Harbinger, and we know about the costs there. Miku still having a Doom party, and Throw Koji. Throw Koji has actually allowed me to legitimately clear Harbinger in one run. Granted, I had Burning Man, but you get what I mean. I can go over the characters and old gods, but ultimately, Harbinger makes the game harder overall. Of course, Katana still slays mostly everything. Actually, well, you need kind of need to evaluate your situation if you're not one shotting because. Uh, you know, the Sailor's boss on Timeline B does minus for all damage in a certain situation, which I've run into. And the math requires some build into a Katana at that point. But still, Katana's main weakness is that it's a dexterity weapon that doesn't help you mitigate events. It's still a pretty good weapon, the best weapon, I'm not gonna say that, but it does have its weaknesses. As opposed to light source weapons, because they're light sources, or weapons that benefit from perks or other stat builds. In short, god builds are harder to work towards in Harbinger because of all the changes I just went over. If you have any comments, feel free to put it in the comment section below, any questions, whatnot. I'll try to answer them, but like I said, the community is pretty good as well. If you want to subscribe to see someone fail and laugh at someone who's playing this game, feel free to subscribe to me. Uh, and if you're crazy enough to listen or have watched all of this video up to this point, I double thank you for watching. Jared and MML, out.